Sometimes things just don't go your way and that's the time when you need to show your users errors or problems. One way to deal with this is using alerts and today I'm going to show you how you can implement them. There has been a change from iOS 13 and 14 to 15 where they made it a lot easier so we don't have to work with special type alert types anymore. We can directly use our buttons and text fields in alerts. If you have a look, if you just have a look at the human interface design guidelines for alert. It says it's showing critical information. An alert can tell people about a problem, warn them about action that might destroy data. From the best practices, it is important to not show alerts too often because it interrupts the usual flow only if it's very important. Alerts are shown modally on iOS, on macOS and on watchOS. They look very similar on all these platforms, so I'm only showing you these examples for iOS. Let's have a look at the demo project. This is a project which I made so I can demonstrate a lot of these presentation views. So I introduced here already some kind of sheets and then I need to go to leave a review. I also use this here for popovers and now as a test, when I here write a review, so I leave a emoji and I want to submit this. I need to have internet access and as a demo I'm just going to show here that we have a problem. Maybe you got this error back from URL session and we need to somehow tell the user that we can't do what he wants to do. So in this case the alert is good because we want to make sure he really understands that whatever he leaves here is not actually propagated to the app. It's not properly shown in the app in the future. When you, per default you get a cancel button, this does nothing, so I'm just leaving here this alert. Then you can add multiple buttons, like I did here this red delete review button. For example, if I don't have internet and I just want to say, okay, forget about it, I want to go back to my main app. You can do some certain actions, for example, in this case I say, I want to leave here this feedback view. And this then also pops back one level in the navigation stack. From this feedback view, I already extracted the submit button in a separate file. Actually, I added here two because I want to show you these two versions. Now we start with the older one. So this is just a simple submit button. I added here a button that with bordered prominent. And now when I press this, I want to show this alert. So for all of these presentation views, we have to have a state property that says if we show this presentation style or not. So I start with at state private bar is alert shown and we say in the beginning we don't show anything so this is false when i press here submit usually i would have an extra view model where i do the fetch request and then if i have an error i want to show this but right now i make this more simple and directly say yeah we are toggling here is alert shown if I have this problem in the view model, I would have access this or for the network layer, I would have this property in the view model. Or you can also do a on receive and then you would have here your view model dot dollar error. And if you have an, that means that when you have an error in your view model, this would be called and then I could say is alert shown is two. I guess I should first check if I have an error. Got error is not nil, else return. So in this case, I would get the information that, oh, we have an error from the view model and now we should show our alert. This is the way you would connect it to your view model, to your data streams. But now I'm making this a little bit, I don't have a view model, so let's just make this a little bit more simple and investigate the alert. Now this is the one here with these exclamation mark. It's already saying it's the duplicated in future iOS versions. This is the old style, which you can see here that by the content closure, where we have to return an alert type. Whereas if I go to the next one, it's presented actions. In the actions closure, I have to return view. What it says is the buttons that you want to show in this alert. I'm not really sure if action is just a proper way of saying this because I'm returning your buttons or other views. So this is the new one and I'm going to first show you the older one. So is alert shown? And now here 
I need to create an alert type. And now the question is how many buttons do you want to show? What's the text you want to show in this alert on top? So for example, this is the you are not connected to the internet text and it needs to be a text view, not a string. This is one of the reasons why this is so weird. If I now press on submit, you will see the alert. And the text that I added here is the title. As I said, you automatically get here this OK button. Or this is just dismissing this. If you don't want to have this default dismiss button, OK button, you can also define your own. So again, this needs to be a special one. For example, you can say alert. This is a special alert button type. For example, the one that I want to use now is this cancel. So we can overwrite this and add here our own text of done and then return here an action. This is when I press on this done button. Done was pressed. You don't need to use the action calls. And I need to open down here in the preview. So I see this print statement. Now I open this, it shows my done text. And when I tap here, this closure is executed and we see this done was pressed action. If you have a look at alert, you can define the, this was the one that I just used. This is the snips button, the primary button and the secondary buttons. Let's use this one instead for now and say the destructive delete my review. Then you need to decide what to do. Secondary. I'm not even sure if I want to have a secondary is cancel. Okay. Try again. I open this and we see our two texts here. The reason why they are now in a V stack is because they are on top of each other is because they don't fit on one line anymore. Let's see if I can make it short enough. Yes. If I just say delete review, they fit on the same text and when you use destructive alert buttons, they get read automatically because this signals that something is destroyed, some very bad actions happening. If I want to use this now in my whole view, in my whole stack here in this view, when I go and submit, when I press delete review, I want to go back one step. That's why I need to have this action call now. How do I go back one step in a navigation stack? I could manipulate the path property of this navigation stack. So here I have my product list view. It's navigation stack. This is the first view in the stack. This is this view. Then the leave review. And here I want to go one step back. You can access the path property or you can use the dismiss property from the environment. Dismiss bar dismiss. And now when I here have my delete review action. I can just call dismiss, which is then dismissing in the view that this button is in. This is my last view. If I now try to run this, I go to the detail, leave a review. And now I press submit and press here on delete review. And I go actually back. This is because of this dismiss action. I'm not actually dismissing the alert in this case. You don't need to dismiss this alert. It's automatically happening with these buttons inside here. That's why you also have this special buttons. When you press anything here, you would expect that the alert is dismissed. So we don't need to extra do this. This dismiss is for the navigation stack. Okay. This was the older alert with this alert type. And now I want to show you the new updated version, which is available for iOS 15. So I, again, I have to have your state property is alert shown here. Again, I am now doing the shortcut for this demo by toggling this alert show. Now here, if I now use the alert and we are using the one with title key is presented in action. So again, I show the same text. You are not connected to the internet. Then with the is show is alert shown binding. And here you can now define buttons or other views. So just adding a button. Okay. When I press here, it shows this alert with the text on top and this one button. Let's say I want to have the same two buttons as before that says one says cancel and the other one is for deleting. Now I want to have the same red color. And for this, I need to use this button role of destructive. 
delete review and I wanted to do the same I just wanted to pop back in my navigation stack so again I use here this dismiss action okay let's see now I have a delete review and can two cancel buttons <laughs> This is because it, this one cancel button is automatically added, so I don't actually have to do this here. Try again, submit, and we get the same views here. Now the great thing about this alert is that you can add, as I said, different views. For example, you can, in this case, add here a text field into pin. I'm just going to add here a constant. And now when I open this alert, you see directly my text fields even in focus. For example, we just sent you a pin or you got just logged out. Please enter something very important. So this is nice. You can just add views that you really need. And it's super simple. Then the other thing that I thought was quite interesting with this newer alert is that you have here one with an error. As I said, a lot of times you want to show errors with alerts. We have er errors that you need to somehow show. So this is alert shown. Then I need to have here an error. And I did prepare here an error type. So this is a submit review error. It's an enum. Usually you have enums for errors. And for simplicity, I only added here two cases. If the user did not buy this product, he should not leave a review. And the other one is no network connection. Then I need to confirm to localized error for this error view because it needs to know how what to show. It automatically shows some of the text from this error. For example, you can define different bars that you want to show. For example, what is the failure reason? No internet. What is the recovery suggestion? How would you suggest the user to re recover from this error? Please check your settings. Then the error descriptions. You are not connected to the internet. Now here in my submit review button, I can now get an error. I said this would be from the view model, but I'm just storing this in this view. Add state private of our error. This is my submit error type optional. And I don't have something at the beginning. This is the one we show in this view. And I'm just going to use my delete review button. And we keep this one. Now let's see. And one thing that <laughs> I forgot here is actually, I don't really like this because when I show this alert, I actually don't have an error. That's why it, nothing is shown. So here I need to override my error to say, to set this to something like no network connection. And now when I tap on submit and I open it, this, it shows you are not connected to the internet. So this is the error description. I don't need to here tell it to use the error description, automatically does this. This is super convenient and you don't need to here program so much. You just put everything together in your own custom error types. For the alert with error, you can also additionally add here a message. This is then a smaller message below the, you're not connected to the internet. And in this message closer, you get the error. So whatever you passed in here, you get, for example, you can say text error dot recovery suggestion and if this is not working something more generic try again later <laughs> although i don't really like this as a user because i always get hi when is later i later is not good i want now so now when i open this you see here i have the please check settings this is from my error description suggestion the error suggestion for no networking is actually please check settings what also changed when I use this message is that now for the actions, I do get the error. So you can show different buttons for different errors. Maybe you want to only show one button for a certain error type. Like in this case, a button where you go directly to the settings view or settings or you open something else. The thing that I don't really like is I would have preferred to have here a binding to this error. So instead of here having two, one is alert shown, I would just expect here something like this so binding to error which basically says show this alert if i have an error with this type here is not nil and then show all of this rest now i have here two state properties is alert shown and error which i think is a little bit too much it's only necessary to have one in this specific case but i think it's already a nice idea to really think about errors with alerts that they try to attempt with these newer alert view modifiers.
Okay, this is a wrap. I showed you how to add here this alert views with the two different versions for iOS 13 and 14 and the newer after iOS 15, which is more flexible and just easier to use. Alerts should be used very sparingly only if you have an actual error, a problem, because it's just annoying for users. It's a good way of dealing with errors if you need to make the user really aware of them. Another type of presentation that is very similar to alerts are action sheets. In another part of this demo app, I added an action sheet where the user can press on this person icon and then say change profile picture, log out or cancel. So these are distinct actions that the user can do. There's no error that occurs, it's just what you want to actually do. This is very similar to confirmation. This is done with action sheets and the newer version, this, is, this also was updated for iOS 15 with confirmation dialogues because the user need to confirm something. If you want to learn how to work with action sheets and confirmation dialogue, check out the next video in the series. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Until next time, happy coding.